video swap. Roger. Okay, for anyone just tuning in, we are right now in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument in the northwest western Hawaiian Islands. Uh, this is a sacred realm of the native Hawaiians, and it's a privilege to be here. And Ten we've minutes, just um, 265, please. We've just spent a couple of hours um, surveying the uh, aircraft. Uh, aircraft carrier Akagi um, of the J Japanese Navy from the 1942 Battle of Midway and um, we are currently about to in the next five to ten minutes about to start a watch change um, so thank you everyone who has been tuned in with us and um, sit tight while we get as people come in and transition, there may be a bit of a lag in the SPL, but we will be here until 7 a.m. when we are planning to end our dive. I'm fine. Thank you, Zero to Four Watch. Thank you. Thank you, Hans. Thank you, Hans. It's been a pleasure serving with you, as always. Oh, that's kind of you. Remember our motto, hope dies last. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hand the navigation reins over to Derek. Uh, again, it was a pleasure um, serving on this mission, and I hope that um, they can. The next team finishes this dive uh, with some positive imagery. Uh, Dan signing off for handover. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and an honor.
How do you check SPL? Oh, I am down. Loud and clear. Set one, set two, set three. Rec one, rec two, rec three, rec four. Well, just let me know when we're ready and we'll we'll get to it. Yeah, good morning. I think the front row is ready here. Great. Good morning, Malia. Aloha kakahiaka. Good morning, Hans. Uh, we're ready here. Wonderful. It's a pretty strange object. Can we get a little bit of a zoom on that? Ed, you're welcome to zoom one. Copy. Going in. Looks like there's a ladder attached to this. A cable tray. Yeah. Yeah, we're in this piece. It looks like there's a ladder. And it looks like that's part of a hatch or something or a door. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it has it has the look of there, you know, like a, with a, uh, almost a tarp, but it's steel. Imagine we're looking at steel. I'm guessing we're probably looking at a piece of the side that was literally blown off the ship. Blown quite a ways. I think we're... Do we know how far outboard we are from the side of the hull, from the starboard side? 40 meters, 60 meters? Back to you on that. Roger. That's a pretty big piece. The scale is deceptive. You see something like that, it could be four feet, it could be 20 feet, and then you see a ladder, and that's a big right. piece. Yeah, it looks like we're about 85 meters from the main. Wow. Castle. Roger. Yeah, those ladder rungs would be on the order of, you know, 12 to 18 inches. Probably. Yeah, yeah, that is a big piece, and we're right in the debris field. That's very heavy. Yeah, I don't have any guesses, Phil. You're going to hear me say that a lot. Wow. Okay. Thank you. We can go wide and um, and continue. Copy. Coming out. I'm trying to come out. I'm full wide. Let me just double check that. Yeah, I'm full wide. A picture of me for what? Already done. I don't like it. Huh? Probably <laughs> if you took it now, after 14 hours 
So as we do this, do we need to be dropping a, a point or uh, the time code is there and the, the positions are there, so this is all archived, correct? We don't need to be making a, a, a dropping a point to associate features with locations, do we? Uh, I think it's helpful. Yeah. It's a good breadcrumb trail. Um, no, yeah. Can drop a marker here on it, the uh, it's, map. It's not bad to do. And all the logs are using UTC, including the video time code. Right, yeah, very convenient. Yeah, um, ladder and uh, ladder large hull piece. I, mean, I don't know what else to call it. Got it. Ed, I see a stanchion of some sort directly ahead of us. Could you go ahead and uh, zoom in? Yeah, coming in, I see it. Like, uh, you're dropping down way low. Yeah, I assume that's, that's interesting. You know, Phil, we don't have the lasers for scale, but, you know, that's not a round shape. That's that triangulated oblong kind of shape that we saw in the forward pylons or pillars supporting the flight deck, but I'm, I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm just noting the shape. Sort of teardrop shape almost. Right, right. I mean, the only way to pursue it would be to get an exact measurement. Coming out. Looks like there's smaller bits. I'm seeing some ribs with some holes in Yeah, them. can we zoom back in and then pan up or? Tilt up, absolutely. Thank you. Coming in. Right there. Holding or trying to hold. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I couldn't say what it is. I would just say that we saw some of that framing attached to the tops of the pylons over by the bow. But do we want to go navigate to that bright target on the left of the sonar? Large one? Yes, I think that'd be a good idea. Uh, is that too far back? Yeah, it looks like it's kind of halfway between where we are and the actual wreck. So it's backtracking a little bit towards the wreck. Oh, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I just rotated the heading to put it ahead of us. How far is it from our position? About 85 meters. 85 uh, meters. Any potential that it is the wreck? 85? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's going to be the wreck. That must be the side of it then. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, any targets you'd like to point us at, or we just go after a bright spot? Yeah, you know, targets of opportunity, a bright spot, but generally, you know, moving towards the bow parallel with the ship. And then outboard of that is, is kind of our understanding of the area right now. Maybe we want to look over at a heading of 
055 055 and see what we can see try to work our way back that way towards the bow Zero four zero. Sure. All right. Uh, did I just hear that we wanted to work parallel to the ship, or? In general, you know, we're not we're not mowing the lawn. We're in the general area of getting coverage of the larger targets of opportunity. So I think we go from target to target and, you know, changing direction is okay doing that. And then we know where we have gone and, you know, we'll not cover the same area again, but uh, move outboard from a lane, so to speak. Yeah, kind of, kind of general instructions, but... Uh, Okay, um, I think... That's our objective. If we did like a 35 meter move at 050, that would kind of bring us back this way towards the bow, paralleling the wreck. We could just kind of... We're going to be moving slowly as we go anyway. So yeah. We could stop and investigate things. Right. Okay. Bridge, nav. We please do a ship move 35 meters bearing 050. Thank you. And while we do that, can we zoom there? Ed, uh, yeah, come here. Yep. That might be just, you know, substrate, but. What is that, that shape? Piece on the left. Uh, yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, looking Copy. like substrate. Aloha Takahiyaka. Good morning to you all from Papahanao Mokoakea Marine National Monument. Ohayo gozaimasu for our friends in Japan. Um, so we are currently on the Alaau Moana Kaiuli expedition with the EV Nautilus. And um, we're looking at the, the, um, the Imperial Japanese Navy, Akagi, the remains of the Akagi that was part of the Battle of Midway. Um, it occurred about six months after Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor, and the 1942 Battle of Midway was a pivotal naval battle that changed the course of World War II in the Pacific, and one of the most consequential events of the war. The battle resulted in the loss of over 3,400 sailors and airmen, hundreds of aircraft, and seven large vessels, including the vessel that we are currently exploring, which is the Akagi. So thank you all for joining us.
Is that the wreck on our right? Uh, yes, I was just pointing directly, almost directly at it. Oh, okay. Heading over to zero nine zero. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. if you're also just tuning in, we're um, in the midst of exploring sort of a debris field that's off the starboard side of the main wreck. That's correct. Um, I didn't really see anything in the, the sonar that way, so um, we're actually swinging the other direction towards the stern. It does seem like in the side scan there's more debris towards the stern end of the wreck. So that ship move is completed, um, so now we're just going to be catching up to it for the next 15 minutes. Just brought the heading around a little bit to put it dead ahead. I'm going to guess the bearings are on 035. I think that's to the south, southeast, well, this south, is, southwest. This is right? upright, oh, so. that's upside down. Yeah. So actually, I think. Uh, I'm not. It doesn't say which way the side scan is oriented. Um, so I've been interpreting it that the distorted part of the image is actually the stern section.
know, it's really small. I'm not even sure what that is printed. I mean, the debris feel is kind of somewhat symmetrical on either side. I mean, it's... Our current move is pulling us towards the stern, that's for sure. Um, so... We haven't really moved much um, since we put that move in, but it will start to pull us um, to the northeast. I think so. It's just our momentum will be going towards the stern at this point. So I don't know if we want to do a big pass that way and then come back. Ed, would you throw another zoom out? I yeah. see a very angular piece of, uh, I think, metal up there. Yeah. Yep. Another disarticulated piece of metal. Um, that the thing right at the bottom of the frame is cylindrical. And uh, my experience is that... And you can see a very rounded piece just above it. Yes, I'm worried about that cylinder right in front of us. Uh, my experience is that there's lots of things that go boom that look like that too. So, what's that big thing? I'm not seeing it yet. Can you put it out? White thing's top right of frame. Circle. Oh, the white thing, yeah. I don't know what that is. And the cylinder, I'll uh, just point it up. Hold on, let me see if I can get that on the next bounce. Uh, and then the, uh, I can't really tell. That's a full zoom. Uh, that cylinder I was talking about is at the bottom of frame on the near side. Uh, it's just out of frame now. Can we get a little tilt? Down? There it is. And I'm just going to rotate a bit over the right for a moment. Hi, this is full wide. Now it looks like something pushed the sediment up over here. Yeah. Boy, that's a lot of relief. So for our viewers who are just joining us, we are um, exploring the debris field. Um, Hans, could you tell us about how many meters this is away from the wreckage? I think we're about 80 meters away from the wreck. 
Yeah, right around 80. Off of the off uh, of the starboard beam. There's a little bit of a straight line just off to your right there, just in the shadow of it. Shadows touching it now. And there's just a general area of debris that we're investigating. So we're kind of going from, you know, sonar target of opportunity to the next one huh. in this general area. But there's relief on the bottom too. There's substrate that sticks up in angular shapes and that's difficult to look over, difficult to interpret sometimes in the sonar. And it seems like there's like a berm of some type that was that was pushed yeah, up. Do you think that was from the, the impact? The it could be. When you see the images uh, from the top down of the whole area, you see a circular kind of crater-like impact. So this whole area was disrupted by a wave of sediment, perhaps, when the, the hull made its impact. Is that is that the thing you were talking about? No, I don't think we've zoomed on that yet. Oh, okay. Let's. Uh, I'll bring the heading around. Thank you. Uh, I was just chasing that other linear piece over to the right. Oh, right. Let's see what we got there. One more heading change. This cylinder. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, looks pipe-like. Yeah, concur. Thank you. Coming out. Full wide. Uh, 90 degree angle right there. And would you go back in it? Yep. Oh, my buddy, Greg Diffendale, nature doesn't do 90s. That's another cylinder, but... It, yeah, that one looks crushed. It looks crushed, and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, The near side of that appears to not be hollow and to have a different color. Right there. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of this small kind of stuff. And bringing the heading back to Come out. course over ground. Pull by. Um, you know, given given kind of what we're seeing in the debris field and how there's quite a bit of clay that may be part of these returns, however valuable, I mean, do you think there's a conversation of heading back and maybe imaging the inboard side of that island if, uh, if there's still a, a couple minutes to make a, a kind of a longer turn and get back to Akagi? I mean, is that is that kind of worth moving to? A little grid at the top there, Tito, I think. Yeah, it might be. I talked with Mike about that. Um, you know, as the lead archaeology. Um, so I can do that, but I think that there's some more larger push. targets. I think if we uh, finish this investigation in this direction and then turn back towards the bow, We'll be looking at, might be running into some of the larger targets. That looks like webbing or netting of some sort. Yeah, sure. Although that would have deteriorated, right? It's got to be metal, I would assume. Yeah, coming out.
So one of the um, objectives of this archaeological um, exploration is determine the general condition of the site, including its general state, sedimentation, currents, and other information that may, may be relevant to protection efforts within the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. It looks as if there's just absolutely no current down here whatsoever. A little bit of... And bringing the heading around to starboard a bit. How are we doing on the ship move? I don't, your mic's down around your chin there, Derek. I don't hear you. Sorry, can't hear you. Sorry, the, uh, the ship move has been done for a while, um, but the, the vehicle's actually moving further away from the wreck and not really in the heading that we sent the ship. So I'm trying to figure out why it's swinging out that way. Okay. Uh, it's moved about 23 meters from where we started when the watch change happened. Okay. I think it's okay from here we move outboard. That's no problem. Which way is the vehicle going? Whole wide. It's going away from the wreck to okay. the, the northwest uh, a bit. Um, so it's just interesting because we sent the ship at a bearing of 050 and we've been heading out at about 15 degrees. Um, yeah, we've been seeing that all night and change of direction makes the the Atalanta do whatever the Atalanta wants to do. Yeah, that is un unexpected. Um. Well, I know it'll take a while, but I'd like to go outboard and then head parallel to the ship and towards the bow. Okay. Um, let's see what our most promising direction is. Thanks. swing 180 uh, pilot and we can see if there's something to navigate to in that direction. Sure, so you'd like me to come to around uh, 225? Yes, please. Yep. That would be sure. helpful right. to try to pick something out. And just FYI, minimum altitude I've seen is about 4.5 meters. All right, I want this heading is uh, 225. Thank you. cylinder, just uh, a little bit to starboard and down it if you want to push. Sure. Still pushing. Mm -hmm. Just go resolve on the next down. Do we want to try to head straight towards that uh, bright target in front of us? About I do. 30 meters out. Coming left just a little bit. So, would they have some munitions on board that might look like that? All right, I got to come up a little. I'm seeing 3.2. So, that's a question from one of our viewers. Is that the shell casings for the larger AA guns? Can any of the archaeologists um, kind of clarify that? Probably not. It, it looks similar to shell casings I've seen.
scale is deceptive and we don't have the lasers on the Atalanta. So if we had to guess about the ladder, at, at, you know, the dimensions on the ladder would be about 14 by 14 inches. Right. And it looked like, so I'm going to say that's eight, eight or nine inches. Or maybe half the ladder, maybe seven. Oh, there is no current. Bridge, nav. What's our water temperature? Probably around two. Can we do a ship move, please? Uh, three zero meters, bearing two two five. Thank you. Hopefully enough to make that inert. So aloha to all of you who are joining us live from the EV Nautilus in Papahanao Mokoakea Marine stuff. National Monument. Take a look. We'd like to welcome our uh, friends from all over the world. We have people from the U.S. and from Japan, United Kingdom, Canada, the Netherlands, Belgium, Brazil, Australia, friends from Turkey, Singapore, and Portugal, Poland, Mexico, Italy, France, Finland, Estonia, and Germany. So, mahalo nui for joining us today and welcome. Uh, do you want to push in on that angle? Yep, coming in. For a tray, maybe. It looks like another or pipe pipe cylinder maybe? right above it. Yeah. But it looks buried like there's a landslide or something. Yeah, there was a mud quake, a sediment quake. Okay, coming up. Let's 
So a question from a viewer. Um, we were potentially seeing some casings from uh, larger AA guns. Is there any chance that any of those munitions, if they are munitions, could still be live? There's always a chance. Yeah, I uh, welcome comments from the shore team who may have yeah, details on that. Any, any ordinance that was aboard the ship in 1942 when it sank would still be considered live unless it's, it's you know, obviously it's exploded. So if you, if you do come across something that looks like a shell or something, it's going to be live. Yep. maybe or a piece with a break in it or maybe another cylinder up there of the same size on the, to the left of it way. so we'll continue ship movements step by step continuously yes that would work out. There's a lot of small stuff here we can take a quick look at, but we definitely want to get to the, some big targets if we can find them. Yeah, so the the target that's kind of straight in front of us, yes. um, do you, we could keep the same heading and just go beyond that another 30 meters. So yeah. See what pops up. To see what the next one is. That's about 24 meters out, so it'll put us right up and over. Yep. Yeah. And in answer to your question, Phil, we're going to, you know, we haven't really gotten too far into the debris field yet, so we're going to continue to prosecute this last task by doing more of the debris field investigation, given the time left. Jake, you know the best way to tell if these munitions are live? If the screen goes black? Accompanied by a sudden reduction in tension.
I would expect a live munition to have a, you know, pointed shell component to it. Hmm. Ed, would you throw another zoom at us? Yeah. Seeing another tube here. Right there? Or actually something a bit more angular coming down. That's like sheet to the right of that triangular up. Oh, there's so much stuff here. Two more cylinders maybe on the left? One at least. And maybe another one at the top of frame right, just out of frame. Hmm. That looks like an, maybe another... Uh, let's see, is darker better? No, I think the up and down motion of Atalanta is pushing the water into the bottom and have a bunch of sediment come up. Bridge nav. We do a uh, ship move 30 meters, bearing 195. Thank you. Is this the piece that had the ladder on it? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, we've kind of swung back that way. I'm trying to skip beyond it now. I'm not sure that what I thought was our scale tracks then. I think those cylinders might have been a lot larger than half a ladder rung. Solid target about 70 meters out. Almost out of that final port there. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get over to. We'll make it. Hans, were you up uh, watching when they overflew the flight deck? Yeah. Yeah, I was on, uh, I came on watch when they were getting up to the bow, already down a portion of the bow. It looked like we saw the, uh, one of the elevators when we were on watch last night, and the, at least at that area, the flight deck looked intact. I don't know if that's what they found on the rest of it. It sure seemed like the majority of the flight deck was completely gone the mm. further we got aft. We were looking down into the upper hangar and the lower hangar. Oh, well. Wow. John, do you think, uh, given the, that ladder there, I mean, this looks like that same larger object we saw early in the debris search. Yeah, we want to get beyond it and then outboard as well. We were just getting into the debris field. 
Roger. This silt doesn't go anywhere. It just remains suspended in the water column. Yeah. A lot of these deep, deep water sediments can be extremely fine and remain in the water column for long periods of time. Um, usually the smaller the particle, the longer it's going to be. There are even some particles that are small enough that they are perpetually stuck in the water column. Thanks for that, Sebastian. So um, with what we're looking at now, um, one of the viewers are asking, um, could this potentially be one of the gun platforms along the top edge or side of the ship that we're missing. Well, maybe a part of it. Uh, I don't... It doesn't look like a gun tub necessarily. But I'd be hard pressed to say what part of the hull or platform that could be. It looks like it was just crumpled. Definitely, yes, deformed, shaped, bent by an explosive force. Blown clear, maybe broken away from the torpedo impacts. So as we look at um, these material remains of the Battle of um, Midway, um, we also want to just honor, you know, the, um, the memory and the service and really the sacrifice that was made by those who uh, participated in this um, battle in 1942 over a three-day period. And, um, you know, it, it's an important part of what we do at Papahanao Mokoakea is to really protect, you know, the cultural heritage, the maritime heritage, um, the natural resources, and all those layers of meaning that are associated with this place, including those of Kanaka O'ivi, the, the Native Hawaiian people of Hawaii, who consider this area the Aina Akua and the Kupuna, the Kupuna Islands from where we believe our genesis of our culture arises and where we return to after death. So a sacred place. And so we honor that history, that time depth that's deep and rich that started with our voyagers who sailed across the largest ocean in the world to live and um, thrive on this isolated archipelago. We honor that thousands of years of living history, and we honor the sacrifice of those who um, sac really sacrificed their lives for their countries. So our U.S. 
servicemen and our, the Japanese, um, you know, both are honored here in Papahanao Mokoakeo. Thank you, Malia. Nooka ho'oli. It's my pleasure. chance that's a gun barrel off to the right. Ridge Nav. Ship move, please. Three zero meters, bearing two zero five. Thank you. Sebastian, could you tell us what we're seeing on that uh, debris? Yeah, of course. So we're seeing a lot of these little white anemones that are trying to get up to these higher places to get better flow. Um, a lot of these and a lot of these cnidarians, some related to corals, need a solid substrate in order to live on. So often or not, they're attracted to many physical spaces. But it seems like these guys really have a preference for being higher up on a lot more thinner objects like rails and poles and chains. And they seem to just be trying to collect what they can in this very deep environment. Mahalo nui, Sebastian. So an exploration of this magnitude isn't possible without collaboration amongst many partners, and those include the Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument, NOAA's Ocean Exploration, and the Ocean Exploration Trust, our partners at the U.S. Navy History and Heritage Command, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, the State of Hawaii through the Department of Land and Natural Resources, Search Inc., and the Defense POW MIA Accounting Command. So this is a collaborative effort. In Hawaii, we call it kako. It's all of us together working to understand the maritime heritage in Papahanaumokuakeo. Can we zoom a bit there?
Hmm. And I'm just going to come a little bit to the right and see what that uh, rectangular shape is. Oh, it looks like there's a box of some type. Do you think the Atalanta's camera can read the label? First I thought it was an open box, but it looks like a closed box. Yeah, can't really read that. Thanks. You think it's that dark patch beyond this kind of uh, crow nest type of thing? Or further out? That's still 40 meters out. And I believe this one we're coming up on, we were looking at, uh, uh, it was halfway 10 or 15 minutes ago. I'm going to scan left and then maybe uh, just take a look around. Two and should yeah. another pile. That looks like an impact crater, too. Well, let's drop a mark here for steel structure and box. Odd. Yeah, I guess the corrosion product could form some sort of darker microbial interaction and give it that coloration. Is 
Is that a seat? Hmm. Do you think that's part of a gun mount? Well, we saw what looked very much like a barrel uh, five or six meters away. Off to the right here is a piece. Oh, you'd like to look at that? Sure. Come on left. And panning up just a bit. Hey, Tito, is there any way you could turn up your um, mic? We're having a hard time hearing you. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just turning up the volume. Could you repeat that? Yep. If you could turn up your, your volume. We're having a hard time hearing you. Mahalo. Sure. Uh, can you hear me better now? Yes, awesome. That looks like corrosion, doesn't it? Is that what you were looking at? Oh, I went past it, didn't I? Uh, our course over ground is zero five zero, I believe. And I'm facing, uh, let's see, 076. And I was just panning around to take a look at something, but uh, might be time to come back to the heading. Yeah, shore team, does that look like anything like part of a gun mount or no? I can't tell. It's, it's, it's hard to say. The footprint is certainly interesting. I mean, the, the circular settling of the piece is, is potential, yeah? Yeah, I'm thinking it's a corrosion product working into the sediment in a place that really has really starved for any kind of nutrient or, and they all seem to have it. You know, what I thought was just a darker patch of reef ends up being, you know, lots of debris in the general area with this darker patch of sediment on top. It's, it's a pretty strange site formation or interaction. I'm definitely leaning towards those being some type of mi microbial mounds along with the corrosion. There's a lot more... Um, biota in the sediments compared to on the ship. So that could be contributing to the darker colors going along with corrosion and maybe some of these bacteria or in microbes. And they suddenly have a source of iron. Yes. And some may just have adapted to reduce down irons or certain materials that are related with this metal. You know, it, 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 it sort of reminds me of some of the excellent work Dr. Layla Hamden has been working on at University of Southern Mississippi, another partner of the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, identifying microbial communities in the Gulf of Mexico specifically, but using microbial signatures to potentially Can we zoom predict there? where yes. where archaeology yeah, sites could be. Down a bit and I'll start panning over the right.
Thank you. We can go wide. It seems like this uh, this darker sediment is, you know, associated with a lot of these little small pieces of debris. In this area, not so much in the disturbed area, further towards the stern, where it was really bounded up. I didn't notice it down there. And we were seeing small metallic debris down there as well. But in this area, where maybe the sediment hasn't been disturbed like that, Well, like there's a significant amount of the microfauna in the want? upper levels of the sediment. It's possible when the ship impacted that the sediment got thrown up into the air and got all mixed up. So maybe those Quackobi communities haven't quite fully recovered yet closer to the ship. Bridge nav. Panning to the left of it. Do a ship move, please. Oh, two five yeah. meters bearing two two five. Coming up on a nice target. Thank you. Yeah, we're we're getting much closer to that large target. We're about 25, 30 meters out. Just to starboard a bit. We were, uh, you know, just just kicking this around. I mean, in front of us. I, I'm not sure what your take is, but I wonder if, um, you know, Akagi and these other carriers had, you know, a suite of, you know, ordnance dollies or you know other kinds of ordnance movers, either in the hangar deck, certainly, and maybe even on the flight deck to move uh, move equipment and ordnance around. Yeah, that's a possibility. I think they'd have to. <laughs> Scale can be so deceptive, though, you know, sure. it, without the sure. lasers. I have a quick question. Uh, the debris, did it occur after or while falling to the bottom of the seafloor? That is an excellent question. Continuing on with the survey. Um, you know, four torpedoes struck the Akagi at the surface, and things are going to be blasted apart by that and raining down. Do they end up next to the ship when it hits the bottom? Yeah, possibly. Um, and then when that, that wave of sediment sweeps outward from the ship's impact, do they get tumbled in that and semi-buried? Sure. Um, I guess that's the only way it could happen. Why would they be out here after the ship hit the bottom over there? Why would these little pieces be over here? Or were they torn off as the ship fell through the water column? So maybe either of those two are good guesses. Yeah, it's just, if you, I was trying to think, like, looking at the debris, if you could tell if it was by like an explosion or fire or... Yeah, I, 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 I couldn't tell you. Okay. Thank you. Off to the left. And you're welcome to Zoom. Another one of those cylinders. Yeah, those seem pretty common. Is that sediment or is that also just like chemical alteration from 
the, the wreck. Looks more like corrosion and corrosion, whatnot. Yeah. There's probably something there, but it's mostly larger than really corroded now. Yeah. Hmm. You know, we're seeing quite a few of those same sized cylinders. It's not just a random chunk of pipe or anything. Is there like any section of the ship that might have carried a lot of these cylinders that may have broken off during the fall? Like an ammunition locker? I was thinking of probably, I, I was wondering how big the shells were, I guess, for their missile or their mm -hmm. ammo. Mm -hmm. Is there one like right behind it too, like right there? Or, I don't know. And that might right be. There. Yeah, well, there's. They all seem to be the same size. Yeah. Is there possibly a connection to that sled like sled like object that we saw earlier? That big piece of metal. That was embedded at an angle. Uh, that was a pretty large piece of, of hull or something. Yeah, possibly. Hans, does this white material look similar to you to the uh, material we saw in the superstructure of the Yorktown? It does. So maybe a fire and some uh, insulation or what a similar material? Yeah, very possible. And these cylinders don't seem to, from my uneducated point of view, have a projectile associated with them, so I don't know if they would have retained their spent cartridges to reuse them, probably. So seeing so many of them crushed, it must they must have been some type of sealing. Uh, right. Right, the depth got to them, the pressure. Or like 7,500 PSI here. Actually, that was the other wreck. Let me do the math. Uh, da, 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 535, 536. I believe we're just starting to see the yeah. edge of that target. See the chasing. sonar? About 20 meters out. It's kind of at the edge of our visibility. Just inside of it. Yeah. So, without accounting for the nonlinear pressure, it's like 7,800 psi. I think we're about 80 meters out. It would take a lot of force to move even something small like that 80 meters through water uh, horizontally. So, or Certainly could have butterflied on the way down. Here's where we are. In that area. Um, Hans, is there any poss do you know sorry, if you do do you know if the ship was scuttled at the same spot that it was hit with the explosives? No, it drifted for an, a whole day and night. Okay. Do you think also while it was drifting that it could have been losing pieces of it? Absolutely. Okay. So like a cookie, tr like a crumb trail. A debris trail. A debris trail. Yeah. We love debris trails. <laughs> we follow them. <laughs> wow. We love anchor chains. We follow those. Uh, that you find an anchor, an anchor chain in the bottom, you got to follow that chain. Yeah. Must be disappointing if it sometimes lands to no to nowhere. Do they? Have, does this have anchor chains? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we saw those on the bow. Yep, we did the, the two tech anchors, capstans. Yep, they were still in their hose pipes and wow. chains still there. 
A lot of ships lose anchors. You know, I think more ships lose anchors than retain them. It carried multiple anchors. You set it down, it gets snagged, it doesn't come back up. Or the, the winds pick up. The anchor rope breaks, or the chain e even breaks. What would be an instance that they would have to use the anchor? Well, they'd use it normally if they were coming into um, to coming into moor and there wasn't a set mooring for them to pick up. They would drop the anchor. You're waiting for a berth alongside. Secure the ship. Go out yep. to anchorage. Or if any vessel ever, you know, loses its ability, its propulsion, and it's drifting and getting into the shallows, they're going to put an anchor down to prevent that. I think some of the vessels I've been on carry an anchor just to slap against the hull to keep you awake. <laughs> just the Atlantis. Yeah. Atlantis. Uh, that's another, so it has a hint of cylindrical. Yeah, I was just trying to think of if they could use an anchor during battle or... Can you move your mic a little closer to your mask? It's Oh, Hannah. Oh, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry. Better. Yeah, thanks. I was just trying to think of um, what they could, why would they, if they did anchor during a battle, because I feel like they were oh. constantly moving. Probably. No. Yeah, yeah, they'd want to cut and run. They wouldn't yeah. want to. Not, yeah, not during a battle, but yep. during normal yeah. ship operations. And I'm going to say they didn't carry 5,000 meters of chain. <laughs> yeah. It would have been the entire carrier. Yeah. Yeah. Another need, cylinder. Need to get a little closer to what we're trying to get to. You're pretty good at spotting those. I'm not sure this is the. There, there. I, I think if I turn more. Yeah. Well, I'm still seeing some debris 16 meters out from here. But it looks like we're going to swing a little bit to the. Yeah, we should be heading towards 225. But we don't have much left in that move, I don't think. There's one right there. About a, what, an hour and f right. 40, f hour and a half of bottom time left per our schedule, is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah? Yes. Hi. Okay, so I have a question. So our viewers are watching along with us, and on channel three, we're seeing the sonar. Are all of these spots on the sonar debris in the debris field? Like, do we see the ship Wait. at all? This ship is not in the sonar right now. Mm -hmm. It would be a very dramatic target. I'm going to say the majority of them are, but there are piles of sediment that are showing up too, some of those big reliefs. Mm -hmm. We're investigating some of the larger targets, mm -hmm. so we're moving in kind of a general area, but uh, you know, we can change course to look at targets of opportunity. Bridge nav. Ship move, please. Two zero meters, bearing two two five. Thank you. So this will turn us outboard a little bit, right? Um, we're still comp we're still continuing that heading that's kind of paralleling the ship. Oh, okay. I'm trying to get to that. Ed, would you? Post? Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. Thanks, Tito. Target that we've been moving towards gradually. 
Yeah, yeah, let's take a look at this. I think it's the large target. And then if there's nothing ahead of us in the move towards the bow, we can swing outboard. You know, again, you look at that and think, well, you know, is that part of a kitchen pot? And it's probably 30, 40 meters or 30, 40 feet in, in length. Okay, I think you can derive some scale by the zoom I'm doing. That kind of informs how far away we are. Mm, yeah. So, I mean, you can, uh, yeah, you've got much more experience at that than I, I would. If uh, I provided a uh, skilled technician with the specifics of our sensor size and lens, uh, they could do some photogrammetry to back out size, but they could only do it from full wide because I don't uh, I don't have metadata on the focal length. When right. I, zoom. I was just about to suggest that. <laughs> so that's just kidding. That, that there, they could back out size, but uh, not when I zoom. Yeah. Uh, and I was going to say, uh, don't a don't wait for me to ask you to zoom. You're welcome to, uh, to push. It's so much more important when I'm driving Herc or Little Herc or something. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm using altitude so much more that the zoom. Okay. And I can almost feel you wanting to over there. Yeah. 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 yeah we'd appreciate well, the, uh, this this pile of debris up here. Lack of a pilot cam uh, is a different world. Welcome back, Mike. Good morning. Not, not specific. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. How the, how's things going? Looks like from the nav screen, you guys have covered a lot of area. Well, you know, we've just we've just moved into this area, okay. still on the same path, headed towards the bow. So let's give yeah, Sebastian a hint of biology. Anything uh, of note? Some really large structure of yeah. hull and, and, and ladder and scale is so deceptive. Yeah. You know what you think is the size of a surfboard ends up there being you, you know 100 feet long and has a tiny little ladder attached to it. Right, piece of biology. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Um, how was the uh, flight deck? Or the lack of flight deck? The yeah, yeah. It was, there was very much lack of flight deck. Yeah, full wide. The, the devastation aft was incredible. It made me even think yeah. that the, the dive bomber, Dick Best's bomb, maybe came in from the bow and headed aft because it just Oh, wow. Blew everything yeah. out back there. Huh. Yeah. We really couldn't make even make out much of the the aft elevator. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, well, that's... Except to kind of assume the place where it was. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that, that was an important um, angle to get on, on the wreck. I'm glad we did that. Well, good. Um, all right, well, guys, we've got about 90 minutes left in this dive. Um, looks like we're making good progress in the debris field. So, great. There are a lot of times um, when we were in Turkey, uh, Turkish waters and we were doing uh, dives uh, many years ago, and uh, <laughs> I would go to bed for like a couple of hours and come up and like the plan had completely changed. Oh. Like we were on our way up or back on deck, and I was just like, what is going on? <laughs> so here you are doing exactly what the plan was, which is great. I assumed instead of sleeping, you were just down writing a proposal to return with the 6,000 meter ROV. Oh, that'll be later. <laughs> uh, there's a uh, almost brackish 90 degree. Ooh, it's a little close. Yeah. Uh, wow. Hello. Wow. And you know, remembering the scale issue, this, yeah. this is a big, big piece. Yeah, I'm full wide. Yeah, let's put a mark here. Uh, major steel structure. Uh, That's really going to distinguish things. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's uh, that's very, very detailed in this description. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I pride myself on my writing. Yeah. Well, hey, you are accurate. And that is a very accurate statement. Uncanny metallurgy skills. <laughs> yeah. But also what we've seen on a lot of the steel debris is this microbial darker patch. It's probably the additional iron, possibly. Oh, maybe. Huh. Going into the sediment. Sediment. I mean, every, not on the disturbed areas towards the aft, or towards the stern, but up here, just, you know, circles of it around a single piece of iron and steel. Oh, huh, that's interesting, yeah. And it, it, it's got to be the iron yeah, going into the sediment, feeding the microbes in some yeah, way. That, no, that's a, yeah, that's a good theory. Um, yeah, there's some, that's a good example right there. Yeah, I know that there's a lot of, um, on um, 19th century shipwrecks in the Gulf, we were seeing a lot of these bacterial mats. Um, and, uh, well, there we thought it was the, uh, the nutrients from the wood and the other decaying cargo, but there's yeah. clearly not any of that here. So maybe it is a, a source of iron. The Pacific is generally iron limited as, as a nutrient. That's an interesting piece. Any guesses, Shoreside team, on this major piece of structure? Uh... Hans, I really appreciate your analysis, actually. It was great. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, I, well. mean, I mean, it could be, a, I mean, a, some kind of, it's obviously crumpled, so perhaps the you know, structure fell a little ways through the water yeah. column or was ejected from the site. So, yeah, um, yeah, somehow. Yeah. We're not going to know. Who knows? Yeah, it could be so much. There are places in the shallow coral environment where the steel has a, a deleterious effect on the balance of the ecosystem. The iron-rich area will stimulate the growth of an algae, and algae is not compatible with coral reef ecosystems. You know, they're kind of, I guess, two different types of uh, uh, ecosystems and uh, the algae will overgrow the coral. The particular algae is Lingbia that starts to grow this dark brownish algae, this fine filamentous algae. And I don't mean any disrespect, we had a common name for it when we were diving in it, we called it hippie hair. <laughs> But I think Rose Atoll had the wreck of a longliner, and the fish and wildlife folks did a study of the lingbia. They could actually, I think they said they could actually detect the signature of the lingbia in satellite imagery spreading over the reefs. There was a mitigation effort, and they went in and removed a lot of that, that longliner. Wow. Hey, Hans, yeah. uh, got some great insight here on degradation and, and rust and certainly in metal here. Sean. Hello, this is Shauna Daniel from Naval History and Heritage Command. Um, one of the archaeologists aboard, but also my main focus is artifact conservation. So a lot of times I deal with the uh, degradation of uh, different kinds of metals coming through our uh, conservation lab. and. Uh, it's really interesting um, seeing some of the corrosion products that I'm seeing, especially in contact with aluminum and you've got a lot of these iron. Um, there's so many factors that uh, go into the different colors of corrosion that you see. A lot of it could be because of more oxygen in the environment, less oh, oxygen um, can definitely change the color. Um, um, you were talking earlier about white blooms uh, that usually indicates uh, maybe aluminum presence. Ah, ah, interesting. Uh, so uh, it, it really depends. I know uh, sometimes colors um, vary. Uh, also, it depends on the metal itself because metals are uh, different alloys. So um, especially with iron, um, make it in steel because you have to add a little bit of uh, different metals to make it stronger. 
So it's really fascinating to see some of the um, corrosion products that I'm seeing on here, but also how well preserved a lot of this stuff is too, because um, because of the low oxygen and because of uh, how dark it is, it's really impeding some of that uh, corrosion from uh, further damaging the artifact. So just a little insight there, um, and uh, it's just a for me, that's a fascinating subject. So, thanks for letting me share. Thank you for that. That's that's very interesting. Great I appreciate content. that input. So, Hans, the feature from those cylinders I'm not seeing is a wider diameter at one end, like you would see in, well, from my experience, a 105 millimeter tank shell, uh, which is very much like a a, a bullet. Uh huh. You mean the canister is also the shape of the of the shell? Uh, well, yeah, but at the uh, end where uh, the block or the breech would close against it, it's, I would assume it would be wider so that when the round is inserted, it doesn't go further into the barrel than it should. But, oh, yeah, huh. yeah, yeah. And I'm not really seeing that on the cylinders, but I don't know the scale, so it could be raised four inches, and we're just not seeing it because they're so large. Yeah, yeah, I'm just not the uh, not the ordnance expert. I yeah. should be because I remember the um, what were the rounds that the uh, I think there was a 37 millimeter gun on the Amtraks on the LVTA fours that we find around the shores of Hawaii and the training beaches. Oh wow. And they had rounds that were, you know, shaped rounds, there. but they were stored in a canister that was just capped on each end. It just looked like a Pringles can, basically, nondescript right. flat canister. Well, Same diameter at each end. So this is Nav. Uh, we're done that move, so I just need a little direction on where we should search from here, or how you want to spend the remaining time we have. Um, we've got about an hour and a half, a little, little less than that. Yeah, my thought was to turn outboard, so away from the bow, like at a 90 degree angle, and move out um, 20 meters, 30 meters, so we'd be a little beyond the overlap, and then turn again 90 degrees and head back towards the stern. Okay. What, what do you think, Mike? Yeah. No, that sounds good. All right, so we do a 30 meter move, bearing 302. Coming out. And let's drop a mark here just for wide, wide distributed area of, I hate to say things because it doesn't sound <laughs> very specific, but. Debris, which is equally specific, <laughs> yes. but. Anthropogenic items. Yeah. just. The, there was a particular concentration right around here. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of the darker patches and then the, the white, possibly aluminum. Bridge, nav. Yeah. The, the white, every time I've seen that, it's not in a uh, it, it's in a moundish. It's really powdery, Should really. Mean, hmm. It has elevation to it, though. Bearing yeah. 302. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what to say about that. Uh, but I think um, Shoreside's comments about the preservation are correct. I'm so yeah. much more used to seeing iron and steel wrecks in shallow water where they become completely encrusted. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't be seeing surfaces of um, any of this stuff. We have a CTD on Atalanta? We do, but it only reports sound velocity. It doesn't actually report the individual Does it log conductivity, that? temperature, and depth. I'm not sure what it logs. <laughs> so we don't know what DO, dissolved oxygen is here? No. Just sound velocity. And we're thinking, Mike, anoxic? No. No. For sure not. Okay. Because of the decay. 
Well, uh, no, I mean, the, the, the bottom waters of, of the Pacific aren't typically anoxic. You're going to you get... That? Is that a paint can? Or a pot? No. Uh, that's what I was trying to get. Hold on. No. Yeah. You and your paint cans. It, it may be four or five feet <laughs> wide. Yeah, right. I know, but yeah. I see paint cans everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Got in focus for a second. Yeah, we, we've seen a few fish, and and those anemones okay. would would not be um, here in an anoxic environment. You see how all of it has the the sediment, the microbe. Yeah, it's amazing. cylinder and that object at the top. See, now that looks a little more like it's longer at the left end the diameter at the very end. Is, right. You can see in the shadow, it's highlighted. Um, yeah. But clearly not seeing a uh, projectile on the right side, if it is ammunition. And then- Yeah, it looks a little squarish. Wouldn't you, would you expect that they would retain their depleted uh, brass or shell casings to reuse them? I think they went overboard. I think that's, um, I think they, they would just push them overboard from the, uh, the 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 gun mounts. I don't know why they would retain them. Yeah, I'm thinking the canister is really separate from the casing. The casing and projectile are stored in a canister, but I, I might be wrong. I've only seen that for other types of ammunition. And in certain circumstances, like on an Amtrak, Almost a circular indentation or discoloration straight ahead. It'd be nice to see one recognizable piece of debris. Right. I could go throw a plate overboard. <laughs> It'd be very interesting at a site like this. I mean, I know this is gigantically remote, but to put a sediment trap down here, like we use on the cable observatories, that collect canisters so that's at, at very fixed very intervals. Shape on it here. This, does that look like a hatch? Or? Yeah, yeah, it almost looked like a door, didn't it? Up. It does, yeah. And associated frames. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that does look like a uh, like a uh, yeah. C door. Yeah. Be nice to see it from the other side. So I missed some of the mar uh, marine debris yeah, field right. earlier. Um, has there been any recognizable debris that we've come across? I think we just found it. Yeah, here's, yeah. A, here's a door. Okay, I'll highlight this for sure. But it's not like a door that just came off its hinges. It like took the hinges and part of the wall with it. Wow. It's an aggressive door. <laughs> yeah. Someone slammed it really hard. The Hulk. Uh, probably get a better shot now. 
And it's broken. Look at that. Yeah. I'm, I'm if that is what we're looking at. Yeah, the proportions don't seem right for a hatch. Yeah. It's so tall. If the top, you know what I mean? If that oval shape is one part of a hatch, it's not, I wouldn't expect it to be that long. The width versus height doesn't quite line up for me. Well, I think it, it's like a actual door, not a hatch cover, um, which can be flat on the bottom and rounded on top. Got strong backs across it. Yeah. Yeah, it almost looks like a. Mm. So Hans, it's interesting. You you mentioned that these bacteria mats, which are, you know, you're correct, has been at every single piece like object, but we don't see that around the hull. Full wide. You know, if it's a right, right. If it's, a, it's if it's from the source of iron or steel, like it should be all over the wreck too. Yeah. It's weird. Well, we didn't see it in the pieces further aft, which were on the disrupted part of the, oh. the mud with, hmm. with all the topography. I but... Oh, go ahead. Oh. Circle. But, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd imagine there must have been oh, some disruption cable. to this area. Or, yeah. Well, or are we a little further out than where we were looking when we were towards the aft? Yeah, Sebastian, what were your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts were that the reason why we weren't seeing, I mentioned this earlier when uh, Mike wasn't here, um, that it's possible that the impact from the ship really disrupted the immediate sediments around there and in faunal communities, including the bacteria. So those may have not have recovered at the same rates that these ones in the outer debris field have. So it's possible they're still catching up. Yeah. I can see that. I can see a paper in that. Fortunately, I like the big stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, I've I've tried uh, to write a few things on ROV-based observations, and the response I get back is, "Why did you get samples?" <laughs> Another circle. dark spot in the sediment or is that part of the debris you mean the darker spots on the dark spot yeah uh, another good question Hannah's got the questions that can't be answered yeah, yeah. Uh, we think that they're uh, bacterial mats and that they're yeah. mixed in with brown um, the question is what they're eating yeah There's a big market for studies on bacteria and microbes that can recycle anthropogenic objects and oil in the deep sea. Oh, yeah. So someone might be interested in this in the future. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting now that we've observed it, um, we can see if we see it in debris fields on, on other deep water sites. Tilt up. I just want to see that white. Uh, Did you say tilt up? Tilt up, please. Was that a letter? Mm. I missed the letter. Uh. I'm not focused on that near field object. Let me see if I can get it. There we go. Yeah. No. In in kanji? No, uh, it was uh, my imagination. I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. Are focusing. That uh, maybe it's too far away to get it. This I'm good. Would you mind swinging the heading around to about 300, 300? Zero zero? Just want to see if we want to push further out or move um, more to the northeast for our next move. 
three zero zero coming up. Thank you. Start bracket again. Yeah, everywhere I've seen this white, it ha it's raised from the seafloor and almost always in this center. Right. Higher in the center. I have a quick question. Um, how are you able to tell apart debris from a, a, sh a aircraft carrier and an, an aircraft? Uh, well, I don't uh, see any big targets. Maybe we should swing around to. This you mean if, if there was aircraft debris or carrier debris? Mm -hmm. Look off at like. I think that's a question. I probably leads to the aluminum Maybe versus like steel. Yeah. Look out at 28. I foresee a large future for you, Hannah, in this field. <laughs> but there are some distinctive things you often see from aircraft because, of course, they're built very lightly out of aluminum and duraluminum. Some things aren't built very lightly, like the radial engines, the propellers, the landing gear. You know, particularly as the planes got bigger, landings on a carrier became kind of a full throttle crash into the deck and catch the wire. So the landing gear had to be pretty stout. So even when everything else can be deteriorated okay. away, yeah. there will be a radial engine somewhere, a propeller, landing gear of a very specific design. They, um, Hans, were they, they've been using uh, metal or wood propellers in the 40s. Good question. I, I would yeah. guess metal, but I, I can't say. I'll put Hannah on it. <laughs> uh, maybe we should head towards that one. Thank you. Just on the starboard. <laughs> yeah. Sure. That's about 30 meters out. Uh, zero, four, five, zero, five, zero. But in terms of small things, there's going to be a lot that we just couldn't distinguish. What's so, heading on that? So we call it ACW. We're going two, two, five. Aircraft wreckage. Two two five, right? We have been. 